it's good to have you here once again. We're going to continue with our class. Remember the subject is government, UTME. So don't forget. All right, we'll be looking at some questions. This time around, we'll be looking at seven questions. The first one says, an example of a country ruled by a constitutional monarch. An example of a country ruled by a constitutional monarch. I hope you've been observing that our jam questions, UTME questions, are strange. They are not direct. Sometimes you need to think through. So they are a bit confusing and tricky. So take note of this. An example of a country ruled by a constitutional monarch. A. Libya. B. Uganda. C. Morocco. D. Italy. What do you think is our answer? Libya has um, currently does not have a leader. Uganda has a president. Italy has a president. So our answer is Morocco. Morocco has a constitutional monarch. Morocco has a constitutional monarch. So please take note of this. Laws made, this is, before we go for that, this is a very tricky question. Very tricky question. A lot of you may fail this if you're not careful. So now, I want you to pay attention to what I'm going to say concerning this question. Laws made by military government at the state level. Please underline this. At the state level. I underlined it so that you take note of this. When you see questions like this, at the state level are called A, acts. B, decrees. C, bylaws. D, edits. What do you think is the answer? Now, let's define some of these terms. When we have acts, acts are they can be um, um, a body of um, rules and regulations put together. That's when you have, you have the Code of, Code of Conduct, the real act, those kind of a thing. Then you have decrees. Decrees are laws made by the military, made by the military government. Look at it, by the military government. C, bylaws. Bylaws are laws made by the local government. Bylaws are laws made by the local government. Edicts are laws made by the military government at the state level. Made by the military government at the state level. So our answer is D. That's why I, I said a lot of people would have chosen B. You would have thought it was decrees. If you, if you choose decree, decrees, you're wrong. You fail the uh, you fail you failed it because the answer is edicts, military um, laws made by the military government at the state level. Please take note of this. Now, this is another tricky question. Citizenship is acquired by an alien through by an alien through. Now, who is an alien? A foreigner. A foreigner. I hope you know that the, the options are various forms how we can get citizenship. Is this is by citizenship by birth, citizenship by conferment. Yes, let me say something before we go further. Let me shock you. Let's see we're talking about this topic. If you were born in Nigeria and your father and mother are not Nigerians, you were born in Nigeria, but your father and your mother are not Nigerians. You're not a Nigerian. In as much as you're born in Nigeria, you're not a Nigerian. Please take note of this. Students always have issues with this question. I see it repeats itself in government questions and WIEC and other external exams. Please take note of this. So you are not a Nigerian because your both parents are not Nigerians though you were born in Nigeria. Now, let's look at this. 
Citizenship is acquired by an alien through A. Naturalization B. Registration Registration, citizenship by registration. Let me explain this. When a woman, when a woman that is, when a Nigerian woman marries an American man, she goes for this. This is through marriage, registration. She needs to go to that country and register herself since she's married to the man from that country. So she, this is, uh, this is, by marriage, citizenship by registration, then citizenship by birth. Citizenship by birth. You are born in Nigeria and your parents are Nigerians. You were born in Nigeria and your parents are Nigerians. So you are an automatic citizen of Nigeria. Then citizenship by conferment. Citizenship by conferment. The late Mariam Makiba of blessed memory um, the South African woman was somebody that had this. In fact, two countries conferred her this citizenship. Two countries conferred her this citizenship. And we call it, sometimes we refer to it as honorary citizenship. Maybe they have seen your good works and the only way to appreciate you is to confer you with this citizenship. Now, an alien is the one, the answer is naturalization, naturalization. And please take note, before an, a foreigner in Nigeria that wants to become a citizen of Nigeria will gain the citizenship, there are several requirements that, are, that is expected of him or her. One, you must be of 18 years and above. You must be of 18 years and above. And you must have lived in Nigeria for over 10 years and above. Sometimes 15. Sometimes 15. Take note of this. Then you must be in good standing. You must have clean records. The society, the state should be able to say you have not been found wanting. You have not committed a crime. You are not a fraudster before you can be given this citizenship. So this is the answer A. I took time to explain this because a lot of students find this topic very confusing. All right, let's go to number four. The emergence, excuse me, the emergence of nationalism was essentially the result of the ills of Dash. The emergence of nationalism was essentially the result of the ills of Dash. This question is tricky. It's very tricky. Look at it clearly. Look at it carefully. Some of you will choose imperialism. Remember imperialism, neocolonialism, and all that. Some of you, some of you will choose. If you choose uh, independence, you're totally wrong. Wrong, 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 please. Now, the answer is between these two. Slavery and colonialism. Slavery and colonialism. Now, some of you would have chosen colonialism. You are wrong. You are wrong. The emergence of nationalism started right from the time of slavery. Right from the time of slavery. We go back to the story of Marcos Gave and all that. So please, the answer is slavery and not colonialism. Slavery is the answer, not colonialism. Please don't get confused. It looks tricky, so you have to be careful when answering such question. Now, this is another tricky question. We had something similar in one of our previous sections, so take note of this. The UN succeeded. Have you noticed something, students? Have you noticed? that in the jam questions, the UTME questions, they don't write it in full, they, like UN. You, have you seen United Nations? No? You've seen ECOWAS? They don't write the full names of the world. They just abbreviate them. So I, why am I saying this? You need to be smart enough to take note of these little things. Take, look, at, look at this word, 
NATO and all that, it's been abbreviated. So I want you to be conscious of this. I want you to be conscious of this. Now let's go back to our question. It says, the, United, the UN succeeded the, the dash. A, League of Nations, Warsaw Pact, NATO, Seattle. Now, this organization, this one came shortly. Um, this is not a, a, and this particular organization did not exist before this one. All this, in fact, from here, these three organizations existed after the World War. So take note of this. After the Second World War, these three organizations existed after the Second World War. So, now let me give you a brief history about this. The League of Nations existed, was formed after the First World War. The First World War started in 1914 and ended in 1919. But they created this League of Nations to see an organization that will be able to unite nations of the world so that such war will not occur. That was why the League of Nations was formed. That was why it was formed. But unfortunately, the League of Nations failed. If the League of Nations had succeeded, we wouldn't have had a Second World War. It was because the League of Nations failed, that was why the Second World War happened. So after the Second World War, the United Nations was created. The United Nations was created. So the United Nations succeeded which? The League of Nations. The League of Nations. So the answer is A, League of Nations. So I want you to take note of this. Now let's go to number six question. Number six question. The number of permanent members of the UN Security Council is A, seven, B, eight, C, five, D, Six, what do you think is the answer? What do you think is the answer? I remember the word. You must go back to the word. Permanent members. I'm always underlining the key words. Nigeria is the 99th member of the United Nations. Nigeria is the 99th member of the United Nations. The, new, the newest member of the United Nations is South Sudan. And they became a member of the United Nations around 2011, 2012. So take note of this. Now we're talking about the, the five permanent members. So who are they? The answer is what? Five, I've already said the answer. The answer is what? Five, five, five. Five nations are permanent members of the United Nations. You have America, you have um, China, you have um, the Great Britain. I'm going to stop there. I will leave you to find out the remaining two. I've given you three. I'm giving you a tax. Find out this, the remaining two permanent members of the United Nations, please. All right, the last question before we call it a day. The Technical Aid Corps was established during the regime of, have you heard of the Technical Aid Corps? I'm sure you have heard of, about it. They functioned during the regime. Aha, uh -huh, let's yes, before we go further, when we mention regime, what do we, what do we mean, government students? Regime simply means the military administration. The military administration, what we, we refer as the tenure, the military, the tenure, the tenure. So, which of the military, um, um, the military, uh, which of the military, um, these people that the Technical Aid Corps was established during his regime? Look at the names, look at the names. The Technical Aid Corps was very, very functional. They went to several African countries 
and all that. I want you to study about the technical aid core. Study about it, please. Okay, let's look at the question. A, Muhammad de Buhari. Remember, all these people are military men. It was during their military regime, so don't get confused. You're hearing Muhammad de Buhari. Don't get confused, please. Okay? Okay? Olushegun Obasanjo, when he was a military head of state. Muhammad de Buhari, when he was a military head of state. Sani Abacha, when he was a military head of state. And Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida, who? In which, in, in, in which person's regime was it established? Look at it very well. Should I give you a clue? Uh, okay. Let me give you a clue. Let me see if you're able to guess. 1989. Who do you think? Who do you think? I've called, I've mentioned the year, a year. 1989. Who do you think was ruling at that time? Which head of state? Think no further. The answer is D. Ibrahim Babangida. It was during the reign of Ibrahim Babangida that the technical aid corps was established. And it really thrived well. It did a lot of things and all that. Wow. It was nice having you. And it was nice being here. So I want you to study hard, take time, go through all we have talked about, all the 20 questions and above that we have treated. I want you to take time to go through them. And you find that, that government in UTME will just be something you'll scale through. As long as you know, let me go back again, you know the definitions of terms, you're able to, like I said earlier on, the the, the question, the answer that summarizes the question, always remember that. The answer that summarizes the question, that is how you're able to handle, to answer a tricky question. The answer that summarizes the question. Then, remember I said something, they always abbreviate, they don't write it in full. So you need to know, take note of this. If you've noticed, the previous sections we've had, you see UN, UN, they don't write even unite, UNO like you know it, or United Nations Organization. So you need to know these things. The other one was ECOWAS and all that. So take note of these little, little things. If you know them by heart, you are able to, go, you are able to scale through. And government will not be difficult for you to pass. So please take care of yourself, and I wish you success in your exam. Thank you.